I paid $150 for this broken PlayStation from a viewer who sent it to a repair shop and instead of fixing it, they broke it worse. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. The seller said that this PS5 was knocked over due to tripping over the charging cable. He took it to a local repair shop, it's a national chain, where they took over three weeks to repair the port. Once he got it back, it was still broken. They claimed another part was missing, not exactly sure which, and took another two weeks to fix it. He got it back again, and it was able to display a signal, but even moving it just slightly would cause the picture to go black. With less than a day of use, it refused to even display at all. He took it back a third time, and a week later, Later, they told him it was unfixable. So it's going to be fun to see what exactly is wrong and if this truly is unfixable. All right, and we definitely got a bit of a dry spot on the APU here and a dry spot on the heatsink over here. Let's have a look at this HDMI port. I already see a couple problems with it just with my eyes, but let's get it under a microscope, see what exactly is going on. Now, the other thing I noticed is this thermal pad was just randomly right here on the board. I'm pretty sure that goes probably on this guy. I'll have to look and make sure I know where that goes on a different board, but I think it goes on this guy right here. And it's just randomly right there. So the problem with that actually is that it wasn't on that coil, but also with it being right here, this can make it so the board doesn't sit flat down against this heat sink and the liquid metal here. So that could definitely cause a problem too. So we for sure got two problems so far, the misplaced thermal pad and then also the faulty HDMI work. All right, so how many problems can you see in this photo? So I count this capacitor looks like, I'm not even sure if that's soldered in the right place. So that's definitely one. The second problem I see is these mounting holes. I don't even see any solder in there. So this port really isn't soldered down to anything. And then we come down here to these pins right here and we've got a bridge right here. And I don't think that's a bridge, that's close to one, but I don't think it actually is. I almost just stabbed the board with my dental pick, so I almost caused some other problems. Okay, other than that, I don't really see any other issues initially. So we need to fix those issues. Let's have a look at this chip too, the HDMI chip and see if it looks like they replaced that or did anything to that. And honestly, it looks fine. I don't think they replaced it. I don't think they did any work to it. So let's get this solder work done and see if just that alone is enough to fix this thing. In order to clear the bridge between these two pins, I'm gonna put some flux on the joint and then I'm just gonna come in with my large soldering iron and touch it between those two pins and hopefully get the solder to flow to each of the pins without flowing between the pins. Just gonna make sure all of these are soldered down really well. And now that that's done, I'm just gonna bring my large soldering iron over to each of the mounting posts and put a large amount of solder down inside the holes. I'm gonna hold my iron there for quite a while. Hopefully get this to flow down inside the holes. It can be really hard to do that, but, oh, there we go, we're getting it. You can see it going from the top of the post down to the bottom. I'm getting the post heated, but it's having a hard time getting the board heated. There we go. Now, let's go through and make sure these pins are all soldered on here. Good. I might just want to re-solder these just to make sure. I think I will do that. And then the last thing we need to do is just make sure this capacitor is soldered on correctly. It doesn't need to look the best, I just need to make sure that it works. All right, so we have the pins fixed. We have the capacitor just sort of fixed. It doesn't look amazing, but it should still work. We've got the mounting pins looking good. Now, all I've done is fixed all those things. Let's put this board back in and start up this PS5 and see if that's all it took to fix this thing. 
It looks like I also need to touch this pin up a little bit as well. I use iFixit tools for every repair that comes through my shop. Not only are they super high quality, they also have a great guarantee. So if you have any troubles with your bits wearing out or any of your other tools breaking, all you have to do is contact iFixit and they'll send you right out another one. In my opinion, iFixit's precision tools are some of the best out there, but they don't just sell tools. They also sell things like parts. You can get genuine OEM parts from a number of manufacturers right on iFixit's website. If you're trying to repair your device for the first time or just need a refresher on how it's done, you can go right to iFixit and you can look up repair guides for your device. They even have repair guides for things like Patagonia clothing. And if you're trying to diagnose what's wrong with your device, they also have a great Q&A section where you can get answers from experts who have done your repair before. These are all reasons that I love iFixit. You should check them out too. Go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix. I'm not sure what the repair shop that tried to fix this was saying was missing on this. I think maybe they were just saying that because they couldn't fix it or something. I'm not really sure, but I don't see anything missing there. So that gives me good hope. One thing we need to do though, is fix this oxidation on this APU chip. I always save these kind of specialized Q-tips when I get liquid metal in and use them just because they're perfect for this. So I'm just gonna take this and rub off this oxidation and then kind of re-spread the liquid metal on the chip. And the same thing over here on the heat sink side. Yeah, there's a lot of oxidation on this. Okay, and there we go. And I am gonna add a little bit of liquid metal just to make sure it's got the perfect amount. There we go. Now that we've got the perfect amount of liquid metal, we can get this thing together and test it. Okay, it's all back together. Let's turn it on and see if we get anything on the screen. Here we go. Power, that's good. I didn't test it beforehand, so I don't even know if it had power. No, oh, black screen. There we go. That's literally all it took was to do a little bit more work on those tiny pins on the HDMI port. And this PS5 is all fixed and ready to go. If you like this video, you'll probably like the video where I bought a broken PS5 that was in a house fire that actually was melted on the outside. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix that one. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix. There's also a link right in the description that'll take you right there. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.